uh, about cloud. I'm going to call my own number on this. And I think some things to keep uh, an eye on, and you got a little bit of a taste of it with the ISO valent piece, is hybrid multi-cloud fabrics. And, you know, the public cloud is going to grow and the hybrid cloud is going to grow. But what I find really interesting is, is if I look at the ARR numbers and the percentage of growth in the hybrid cloud, it's actually outpacing the average growth of the public cloud. Nobody wants to talk about that. And, and oh, by the way, I don't get sucked into this repatriating workloads conversation because net net, more, more workloads are going to the, uh, the public cloud than uh, coming back. Okay, so I'm not going to get caught up uh, in in all of that, but but we're entering kind of this phase two of this hybrid multi-cloud where you know no enterprises want to get version 1.0 of a hybrid multi-cloud fabric, uh, but we're now getting into uh, Rev two and Rev three of all of these, and whether it's hybrid multi-cloud fabrics uh, like uh, Cloudera for data, uh, whether networking and security. Uh, with VMware and um, Cisco, um, and you know even backup and storage companies and data data protection, right? All over the place. Uh, I think you're going to see just some massive growth, uh, maybe 100% uh, increase in in sales for these hybrid multi-cloud fabrics, and I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, I also think in in cloud, um, you know, so AI is going to lift all, all all boats there, okay. And then the only question is, do enterprises have enough money uh, to do the the standard non uh, AI? And I think that's still a, a a TBD. But one of the biggest things that cloud companies are trying to wrangle is simplicity. This stuff is hard, right? And you know, you, you've seen things like Bedrock, SageMaker, uh, Vertex uh, solutions uh, like this come out. I think those are going to, for generative AI, uh, even get simpler. And in fact, you know, Bedrock, for example, you don't have to pick, you don't have to pick the kind of semiconductor that, that you want to do the training uh, or, or the inference. And I think what you're going to start to see is more simplicity, but also being able to choose your service and parameters around an outcome, right? Hey, I want the cheapest. I want the highest performance. I want this without actually having to do, uh, I call it bag of parts AI, which requires you to have a research team, which limits AI to only the largest institutions that uh, are, are out there. So, I'm expecting a lot more simplicity uh, to come in. And the first year is really just getting ready for this stuff. Uh, but it's just too hard. And, you know, the conference that conferences that I've gone to this year, I didn't get a lot of definitive answers uh, on, you know, in fact, it was more we're, we're working on it. So I think the working on it is going to translate into uh, simple. And I think time motion studies, these cloud companies have to, advertise this in terms of, you know, hey, 27 less clicks or 100 less decisions that, that you need to, to make to get these medium-sized companies uh, in, uh, in, in, into, the, uh, 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 into the boat. So my final comment is I think we're going to see even more companies doing more definitive uh, silicon uh, for cloud to either lower costs or uh, maximize performance or um, manage supply chain. Yeah, some some very good takes there. Um, you know, I'm going to just, I'm going to try to simplify a bit on the cloud. Obviously, it's talk about a lot of oxygen from IS past SaaS. You could also go to the implementers, by the way. Um, you know, our new data shows that uh, on a two to one basis, those that are going to implement AI are going to do it with Accenture over any other um, any other SI. That's how big Accenture is. It's crazy. But um, it also says complexity. The complexity is substantial. But, uh, you know, look, I actually think to some extent um, it's going to be a year of FinOps is going to be really important in cloud this year. 
is that as companies continue to grow and the growth of cloud will be substantial, I do think we're going to see it falling into the 20s percentages, 20 percentage CAGR, um, even as we come back. And I think that's a combination of FinOps creating efficiency of buying and also companies um, leaning into AI and doing it at different layers of the stack, meaning it's going to be more distributed. I think AI really, here's an interesting thing, but I think AI sees a big gain in SaaS, meaning companies that democratize it and make it available at the application level are going to be very popular. You're seeing Oracles and SAPs and companies like that. They're actually democratizing their best AI features only if you're running their application in cloud, which is forcing you know, some companies that have long stayed on-prem, this could be that forcing function that finally moves them to cloud. But you also see I've made a pick in AI of, like, of Salesforce. And the reason I made that pick uh, in AI is because Salesforce is a really easy to consume. You know, we can argue how easy it is to use, but you can say it's a very easy to consume SaaS based AI, meaning you want to know something like customer churn, you can run your SaaS, have all your data in there from your CRM, and it can give you churn data. You want to know about ERP uh, from your ERP data, something about supply chain, you'll be able to run Oracle supply chain management tool, and you'll be able to get insights on um, this is like that practical implementation and utilization of AI. And these companies can bake it in where it's either more sticky or it adds an, a nominal amount of cost per seat to be able to use all this AI. So people are going to be using and consuming AI in the cloud through applications for the enterprise. I think that's going to be a really, really big thing. Um, uh, so, you know, the other thing is I do think that AWS actually picks up IaaS momentum. And I know that's crazy because they already have IaaS momentum. But here's the thing is I just think Ultimately, the open, so this kind of crosses into AI, but the open distributed model approach is actually where people seem to want to land. It's always, it's kind of always the same thing, Pat. It's like we always talk with hybrid and multi. It's like nobody really wants to be 100% in on anything because they want to make sure that they stay flexible. Um, and so with AWS kind of leaning all in on this kind of open AI uh, approach, not open AI as in open AI, but open AI is in multi-model, which is something you were talking about, um, people are going to be comfortable leaving their infrastructure there. They're not, not going to feel the requirements change. And they already had such a big lead that I just think you see momentum continue to pile on for cloud adoption there. Um, I do think there's a surprise in cloud that's going to be um, Oracle. I just, they continue to, to outpace and outstrip the market for growth. That's partially because they're smaller. And that's partially because they've found a value equation that goes back to my FinOps comment. People are wanting to do things in the cloud, but they are looking to find financial efficiency. And Oracle has sort of reversed the model of other cloud providers as where they charge a lot, where they charge less. And they've been able to uh, in increase utilization of IaaS by being somewhat of a efficiency gainer there. And of course, like 400,000 companies run Oracle and most of them are running it on-prem. And so the process of moving to cloud just gives a natural momentum um, to Oracle and its broad offerings in, in, in uh, cloud.